It's time for another exciting edition of Me Rambling for 15 Minutes, only this time it matters, so you better listen. What is up, my dudes? Welcome back to my channel. So this is the second edition of the Women's History Month videos I have for this month. Today we are going to be talking about some of my favorite emerging female-fronted pop-punk bands. Or really just alternative bands. Not every band on this list is going to be pop-punk. I mean, there's a lot of talent out there, a lot of fusing of genres, have you will. And you know what the deal is with these female-fronted bands is that a lot of them don't want to be referred to as that because that sort of exoticizes them. But it's like if we don't talk about them once a year, how's anyone gonna know about them? You know what I mean? Like, I feel like it's sort of like a catch-22. It's like, you do want to listen to Female Fronted, you don't want to call them Female Fronted, but you still want to know about them. So that is what I am here to do today. I am here to run through 20 emerging acts that if you're not listening to them already, what the heck are you doing? I'm gonna educate the family. So because there are 20 bands on this list, I'm going to try to blaze through them as quickly as possible. First up is As December Falls from Nottingham, England. Their debut self-titled album was released in February of 2019. Their sound is very reminiscent of like 90s, early 2000s bands. You can definitely hear it in the instrumentation. They also have a handful of like throwback nods. You can definitely hear some like Mario-esque jump noises in the song No Money. Money, like, you, you know, like the mm, noise. Next up is Behind the Facade from Queens, New York. Pretty local to me since I'm from Long Island. I Don't Wanna Die in Ohio is a pretty good summary of their vibe. You know, their sound is very high energy, a lot of funny lyrics. They have a very good blend of punk and indie elements that really help their sound stand out. Next up is Camp Cope from Melbourne, Australia. Their second full length album, How to Socialize and Make Friends was released two years ago in 2018. They're really out here representing like the power emo scene in Australia. Like there's not many bands in that particular niche, but they're definitely one of the standouts. While their sound is very simplistic, it's impactful, it's angry, they have something to say and you better listen, which I can obviously relate to. I mean, people tend to not listen to me a lot because I'm short and annoying, so. I mean, I stand. Next up is Crazy88. This is an online band. Their members span two continents, being North America and Europe. This band is actually a super group. It is the love child of internet comedian Jared Alonji, vocalist Lauren Babick, and as it is singer Patty Walters, who for some reason plays bass in the band, even though he's a singer. I mean, he really plays every instrument, so like, whatever. Their sound very much feels like a punch to the face would musically, and their covers kick butt. They released two EPs of straight covers. I really like the one for Colors by Halsey, When You Were Young by The Killers. They're both really great. Next up is Dollskin from Phoenix, Arizona. Their second full-length album, Love Is Dead and We Killed Her, was released last June. If you have ever had the fortune of watching this band live, Honestly, good on ya, because this band rules live. They are so good, so high energy. I watched their set on the Warp Tour when they came to Long Island. Their guitarist, Alex, Holy oh, crap. crap, can she play? It is, it, it, she makes it look so effortless. I'm, I can barely like pick up my phone without dropping it on the floor. I hate to make comparisons, but they actually remind me a lot just based on like their age, their sound, their image of a similar act called Cherry Bomb, which disbanded in 2013 after one album. Next is Eat Your Heart Out from Newcastle, Australia. Their debut album, Fluorescence, was released last year. This band has a heavier sound compared to most pop punk bands in the scene, especially the female fronted ones. But ever since, they were established. I mean, their releases are just continually improving. Like, they're just getting better and better. Next is Envoy from Cleveland, Ohio. They just came back with a new single after going on hiatus last April. Please, for the love of God, support them. Like, I don't know who I need to, like, send a PSA to. Like, this band is so good. They recently played the Snowed In 7 Festival in Cleveland, which, of course, was headlined by a bunch of bands you probably know. Their vocalist, Madeline, has one of the highest, if not the highest belt range I have ever heard in this scene. Her vocals are ridiculous. Like, especially on their older stuff, she hits some crazy freaking notes. So please go listen to this band. Do not let them die out again. Next up is Glacier Veins from Portland, Oregon. They just released their debut album, The World You Want to See, late last month. There was a lot of hype surrounding this band prior to their debut. Like, a lot of people wanted this to happen. They just signed to Equal Vision Records. They have a really cool blend 
blend of pop punk and dream pop, which you can distinctly hear on several songs on the new album, including Everything Glows. She does this thing where she layers like a full octave higher of vocals on top of the main vocals. So it kind of has like this shrill, but like in a good way effect. It's it's very clever. Next is Hail Your Highness from Grayling, Michigan. Their latest mixtape Parallel was released in late 2019. They are a sister act. They're actually composed of two sisters, vocalist, guitarist, and bassist Jesse, and drummer and vocalist Nikki. Their sound is very unique. Like the atmosphere of it makes you feel like you're having some sort of like bizarre dream, which I'm really into. You know, when I make these lists, I'm not just trying to like list out every single band that comes to mind because I don't think that's productive or helpful. So when I put these bands on these lists, it's because I really want you to listen to them because I feel like there's something truly unique about them that stands out. Making our way to the halfway point of this list, we have the band Hoity Toity from Yucaipa, California. Their second EP, Not Your Kind, was released last summer. From what I understand, most of, if not all of the members are Latina. This makes sense since they're based out of the Inland Empire in California. They're almost like a modern day runaways. Like again, I hate to make comparisons to other bands, but like they were really the foundation of female punk in my eyes. So the fact that they have really branched down and now we have this band, which is amazing on their own. The good thing about being part of a female fronted pop punk band or just band period, is that there's like a sisterhood, you know? It's very connected to each other. We really are out here just supporting other females in the scene. You know, I don't think it's a secret that men have sort of just dominated pop punk throughout history. Really the first taste we got of like a female fronted pop punk band back in the day was Paramore, which obviously is not on this list because they're not emerging. They've been around forever. But it's like, why did it take that long? You know, like for like a full, almost two decades before that, we did not see any female fronted bands other than like what, no doubt in this particular scene. Like it's just very hard to come by. So that's why I'm doing this. I really want you to just listen to these bands because they all are unique and cool in their own different ways. And I'm gonna get back to focus now because that was a long oh. tangent. Hi, welcome to my channel where I get distracted almost every second. It's been a nice time. Moving past the halfway point, we have the band Hot Milk from Manchester, England. Their newest songs, Candy Coated Lies and June Gloom, which was just released earlier this year, may be leading up to a full length release soon. I hope it is. They also feature dual male and female vocalists. Their vocalists, Jim and Han, sort of split the vocals on each song. Listen to me when I say this. Like, I, I mean this in its utmost sincerity. They do not have a single bad song. Every song that they've put out in the last two years has been so good. They put out one EP with four songs on it and they are unsigned and in these past two years, they have done more than most unsigned bands will do in their whole lifetime. Next up is Jetty Bones from Urbana, Ohio. She released her third EP, Dash, last year. I say she because this is actually a solo act of singer-songwriter Kel Scaluzzo. On top of her sound just being very different and well-composed, she's also done a really good job of branding herself. Like, if you see her, you know exactly who this is. Like, she's got the yellow hair, she does a very good job with her artwork, everything pretty much comes together very meticulously meticulously, and that's something I really admire because I think that's also really important when you're trying to stand out among the hundreds and hundreds of bands out here. So good on her. Next up is Meet Me at the Altar. They are based out of three states, actually, being New Jersey, Florida, and Georgia. Not the first time this has been done, but it's definitely a feat. It's hard to manage a band when you're all hundreds of miles apart. They released their second EP, Bigger Than Me, last year. All of their members also happen to be women of color, which is also super important and I think needs to be showcased more in this genre. They recently put out this really awesome cover of Caught in the Middle by Paramore. So I hope they keep doing what they're doing because they're doing great. Next up is Not Your Girlfriends from Dallas, Texas. They have a new song called Song About You that was released last year, as well as a recent My Chemical Romance cover. Another fun fact that you'll be interested to know is that they're also produced by Bowling Pursuit frontman Jarrett Reddick. Also, on top of that, they're literally teenagers. Like, I, like I think their oldest member is 15, which that just blows my mind because, first of all, to be a teen band is one thing. To be a teen band that's playing festivals and is managed by Jarrett Reddick of Bowling for Soup, like you must have done something hecka right. Next up is Red Hook from Sydney, Australia. They released a new song, Fake, last year, among many other singles, which I can only hope means that we're getting an album soon. They have an ultra cool aesthetic. They have a rap rock sort of sound on top of that with this very trendy, funky fashion. Next up is Sharp Tooth from Baltimore, Maryland, where I went to college. So I feel you, girl. 
girl. They recently contributed a cover of Die for the Government for the second volume of Songs That Saved My Life. I'm gonna stand up for this because I think this is really important to say and I'm just gonna kind of move back. Just, just bear with me here. Okay, I think this is good. I'm losing my mic here, but it's fine. Ready? Please listen to this band. Oh my God, they are one of the coolest, most unique, most like badass bands in this game right now. They opened up for As It Is at like this club show two years ago and they just blew my mind. The stage presence, she was getting up on all of these furniture pieces like, like girl. On top of that, they have a very, very important message. They are advocates for sexual violence and harassment, which is another recurring problem in this genre, unfortunately. So I'm really glad that someone out here, especially a woman in this scene, is speaking up for their story. And what would this list be without the next band, which is of course Stand Atlantic from Sydney, Australia. They are currently gearing up for their second full-length album after their extremely Brilliant. successful debut album, Skinny Dipping in 2018. They've already released two singles from it being Hate Me Sometimes and Shh. I mean, do I really have to say it again? Like they have done so much in the short time that they have been in this scene. Like they are really just reaching their way to the top. They're gonna be the next big thing. I stand. Stand Atlantic so hard. I, I stand Atlantic. There's no reason not to stand. You cannot help but stand. Next up is Vista from New York, New York. Again, getting some hometown pride in there for you. Their newest EP, The Repair, just came out. They are also due to have another one on the way. They also just released an amazing new music video for their song, Dirty Laundry. Go check it out if you haven't already. For a while, they were only comprised of two members. They recently added a third member. On top of that, their songs just have very deep meaning in terms of their message. They have a few songs about things like depression, eating disorders. So they're really just out here doing the greater good. Next up is another local band from New York and Connecticut. This band is called Whatever We Are. Their new EP Limbo just came out after they just played the Great South Bay Music Festival last summer. They shared the stage with some amazing artists like Taking Back Sunday, Frank Yarrow, Glassjaw. Like they're really, they're really doing the damn thing. Most of the members of this band also contribute vocals. Some of them also rap. Very interesting sound and also very unique branding. From what I've seen, most of their photos involve them wearing all white. You know, again, they just have a very standout sound, so I hope they keep doing what they're doing. And last but not least on my list is the band Yours Truly from Sydney, Australia. Their EP Afterglow came out last year. They were also recently announced to be playing the second edition of the Sad Summerfest Tour. I know I'm already gonna be there. Hey girl. Honestly, this band's probably gonna take over the world soon. They're that good. Like they just, they just really pop off with their sound. They just have so much energy, which is what I love about them. And that that is the end of my list. I wish I could have included so many more bands on this list, but I only have so much time on YouTube and I'm sure you only want to hear me speaking for so long. But if you like this list, make sure to give it a like below. If you want me to include any other bands on next year's list, make sure to tell me all about them in the comment section below. Also, if you're new to my channel, hello, how's it going? Make sure to hit the garbage out of that subscribe button, also hitting the bell icon next to it to get the first notice of when my videos go up. I upload every Thursday. To all of my subs who have been here before, thank you so much for watching week after week. Really means so, so much to me. I hope you guys enjoyed this list as much as I loved making it. And if you like the content of this video, you might want to sub because there might be some more related content coming from me in particular this summer, if you catch my drift. So you definitely want to be in tune with that. So make sure you're subbed, got your notifications on, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!